Trail Runners, welcome back to Chasing Gold, where we are chatting with some of the front runners in this year's Black Canyon 100K. They are coming down to earn one of those three golden tickets, which are up for grabs this year. That's right, three. Get on the podium and we will punch your dance ticket to the Western States 100. Today, we have running royalty with us. Miss Devin Yanko with over 15 years of experience and has won some of the biggest races on the planet. If I was to list these accomplishments, it would take the entire episode, but we're gonna pluck a few just to let you know. She has won at the Leadville 100, the Javelina 100, the Vermont 100, Mad City 100K, Lake Sonoma 50, JFK 50, da 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 she is also a seven-time member of the U.S. national team and has a podium at Western States. Welcome, Devin Yanko. First, let's rewind. Let's talk about this weekend. Uh, somebody was racing. How did it go? Yeah. Um, so I decided for my last big training run to head down from the mountains and go to Moab and run Arches 50K. Um, it went well. I won. So that's a nice positive boost. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> it's always a warm, fuzzy feeling when you're hoping to see if you're fit. Um, yeah, it was super fun. Um, great event by Mad Moose Events. Um, first time racing in Utah, I think, in Moab at least. Maybe. This is the problem with having a really long career is I don't even remember. Yeah, they all race. blend together. <laughs> nice. Uh, and outside of that race, how do you think the buildup has gone for Black Canyon? Do you feel like you're coming in in peak shape? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, my training really started, I guess, after I did uh, JFK this past fall, um, so November, and I've been basically training towards a golden ticket race since then. Um, I was originally slated to do Bandera, um, but that didn't work out for a lot of reasons, and so I just was able to it's kind of actually nice because it just provided me another op like another month of training and black canyon is like way more of my jam in terms of course and strength so i mean i'm coming in as fit as i've been in a while um nice. last year was rough because i was injured but you know i feel really good so cool let's talk about the course and your strengths and your weaknesses have you ever ran on the course before i have not but I've talked to some pretty accomplished people. Um, I just talked to Brittany Peterson about the race. So nice. I feel like I got some good beta from her. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> although I feel like what she said and what I'm going to do are maybe <laughs> not. She was like, don't run the first half too hard. And I was like, but that's the part, like the downhill part, which is totally my jam. Yeah, that has been notoriously a section that causes DNFs. So what is what is the strategy? So it sounds like downhill running, you're uh, very versed in this. I think you're versed in every part of trail running. But yeah. but yeah, talk us through how do you anticipate race day going? Are you running with a pack? Are you running your own race? Are you going to be aggressive up front? Um, you know, I generally kind of in life and in running <laughs> run my own race. Absolutely. Um, so I like the, with such a competitive field, right? You really have to run within yourself. Um, I feel like 
one of the things that like Brittany pointed out to me was the fact that there was a very large pack of very fast people who ran super hard and you know that has a lot of casualties and i think i will run within myself and if that means i'm running at the front then that's within myself but i don't want to get caught up in somebody else's game absolutely um, because like even like looking at the the women that i do know and there's a handful of women that i don't know ultra sign up helps but not all the way but like it's so interesting when i think about different people's strengths and weaknesses and like what their training looks like right like that means so like people are going to run this race so differently so i think it's kind of put your blinders on and just do your own thing yeah i i mean every year we see in a very aggressive lead pack and there's a lot of success and there's a lot of carnage there's a lot of dropping um, and that's just the nature of racing when everyone wants one of those top spots. Yeah. Um, and what about uh, fueling and hydration? What is in your bottles? What's in your pocket for fuel? Um, talk to us about that. Yeah, well, um, I use Goo products and Tailwind. Um, so it'll be a common. Uh, I just moved to the mountains, so I have learned in the winter, it's very hard to practice your fueling because half the time it's frozen. Absolutely. Um, so this made it quite interesting for me. I'm like, oh, I'm going to be good today. I'm going to drink all my drinks. I'm going to, you know, eat my gels. And then I'm like, or I'm just carrying around ice cubes. Um, so, I mean, I have, like you said, like 15 years of experience, right? So I keep things really simple. I'm not like... I don't really overcomplicate my plan in the shorter distances, right? Like I go sure. with gels and like a, a electrolyte drink that has calories. And that's like pretty much what I will do. I might drink a Red Bull, sure. you know, to like get me up those hills at the end. But that's, I'm pretty basic when it comes to fueling. Cool. Let's talk about a little rewind that Anna Mae Flynn reminded me of, uh, a story some of us know when you coming into Devil's Thumb, mile 48 at Western States, maybe a little hangry for some, which she said, popsicles. Do you remember <laughs> this day? Uh, yeah. And she said those popsicles had turned your race from a 10th place female to a third place female. Oh, yeah. I am uh, big on the popsicles. Nice. Um, I, I mean, there is nothing like, I don't even eat a, need a popsicle for calories or whatever. It's just like such a nice treat. Do you have a go-to popsicle? I mean, beggars can't be choosers. Like when you're out in the mil middle, <laughs> yeah, of right. Wilderness. <laughs> right. So, I mean, I'm a, I'm more of, I'm an otter pop kind of person. So nice. Love, otter pops are the best. Are you packing any in your drop bags? I guess they probably won't travel well in the <laughs> desert, right? Uh, no, I won't pack any in my drop bags, but if anybody's watching and hand, tries to hand me one, I probably would take it. I love it. I love it. You mentioned moving recently to the mountains. Obviously, it's going to be hot in the desert. Are you doing any sort of heat training? Uh, actually, I just, I had ordered a sauna that I thought was going to get here, I don't know, two, two months from now, but it actually arrived today. So I will be definitely utilizing that over my taper. Nice. Um, because it's like you know t very cold here so <laughs> it makes a difference and where is here uh salida colorado nice yeah that heat adaptation is about 10 days so i think if you if you start getting in it now up until race day you should be uh pretty good to go yeah as soon as we get off this call i'm putting it together and hopping in so <laughs> nice and how are you going to break down the race? Are you breaking this down? Like, how do you break down a race? Are you breaking it into like thirds or quarters? And are you using like process goals to help you through the outcome goal or like mantras every, you know, X, X piece to help get you through that section? Um, I mean, I haven't really like done my race plan yet in terms of breaking it down. I mean, I think with the nature of the course, it'll probably be like first half and then a quarter and a quarter, right? Because sure. like, I think the second half is where it's all going to be at. Um, you know, I don't generally like pre-plan what my mantras are because 
you never know how you're going to wake up on the day, right? Like, sure. I don't know what it is that I'm going to need to help push me through. Um, but I think just going into the race with like a generally positive mindset and like confidence in my training, right, really sets me up to like go into the race with the right mindset. Sure. With that said, we are going to enter the 10 question fart lick round. Are you ready? Oh, yes. So ready. Oh, yes. So ready. Number one, what sneakers will you be wearing on race day? Sneakers, what a word. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I have been running in the New Balance More Foam Trail. Nice. All right, let's picture that you win that golden ticket. Who would you rather be handing it off to, Gene Wilder or Johnny Depp? Johnny Depp. Everyone has selected Johnny Depp thus far. <laughs> I am, I'm, I'm shocked. <laughs> grocery store guilty pleasure. What's going in that grocery cart every week that we should know about? Oh, I'm so boring. I don't know. Like, um, I've really gotten into. We got a Keurig, and I really like the latte pods because okay. they're like super sweet and they're great. Fair enough. You are walking onto the Mayer High School track before the start of the race. You get to choose the song you are walking out to. What's it gonna be? <laughs> oh man. Mm. I literally can't think of any song off the top of my head. All right. All right. We'll walk out. To Probably the... some rave music, like something. Super, Love it. Like crazy upbeat. Beating up the beats, walking onto the track. <laughs> I think you just answered this one, but how do you drink your coffee? Uh, first, coffee first coffee, second coffee, or third coffee. They're all Love different. it. Walk us through it. Let's hear it. Um, I usually have one of those keurig latte pods first so i can get like a little bit of you know warm fuzzy feelings before i go for my run when i come back from my run i usually have like just regular coffee and i add collagen creamer to it nice and if i'm gonna have another coffee it's probably like because i'm going out to meet somebody for coffee and i get like an oat latte. <laughs> i get as bougie as possible oat per milk latte perfect <laughs> How about any race superstitions? No, that's silly. That's silly. <laughs> As you know, it is very sunny here. Big question. Race day, shades or no shades? Shades, of course. Of I course. like my big Rudy Project spin shields. That You'll see me in those. Nice. Love it. How about race day breakfast? What are you going with? I've been eating... Um, I don't eat a ton before I race, but I eat like a Bobo's stuffed nut butter bar. Okay. Does the trick. I know you just moved there, but how about a favorite trail run in your local, in your state? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell you. I don't want any more. I know I just moved here from California, but I don't want anybody else to move here. No, just that. kidding. <laughs> um, the I mean, the one run I got in before the snow on the Colorado trail was pretty amazing, so. Last question, putting you on the spot. February 12th, the race is over. The dust has settled. What spot are you finishing the Black Canyon 100K in? First. Love it. Devin, thank you for sharing your time with us. We will see yep. you at the start line. Yep. Thanks for having me. Absolutely.